Now what I'm going to show you is a must if you are going to install a water filter system or a water softener system or both as in my case. And what I'm talking about is a three valve bypass system. It has really been a lifesaver. All of the tools and parts that I use are in the description below. So I wanted to make this tip video and how to video in one separate from doing the water softener and water filter install. So with that being said, let's get to the rest of the video. So here we have the tanks placed. The one on the left is the water softener tank. The one on the right is the carbon filter tank. And then here we have the brine tank. Up here we have the water line that comes into the house with some of the hoses plumbed, the hose line that goes to the outside of the house uh, deviating off. But we are going to be installing a three valve bypass uh, system so that while we're hooking this up or servicing either one of these tanks, we can still have, even though it's hard, we can still have the water going into the house. So it's going to cut into here and then feed back into there. I'll show you in just a minute. Now I could just cut both of these and plummet to the carbon tank and then plummet from the water softener tank back into the line, but it is saving myself uh, any type of headache or inconvenience in the future to install a three valve bypass system. Okay, this is the three valve bypass system that I was referring to. So in normal use with the water softener connected, this will be in the off position. This is the water in line that will be coming from the outside, from the water main and going into the carbon filter. And then this is the water that goes into the house. This will be coming out of the water softener. So if I need to service either the water softener or the filter, I can simply turn these into the off position, turn that one into the on position, and I will be getting water into my home. It will be hard water, but it will at least provide water while these are being serviced. I don't need to do it, but it is a huge convenience for me. For the future now there's two types of brass fittings that you can use i am using here the crimp brass fittings and these are actually shark bite parts i'll put a link in the description below where you can pick all of these up the crimp fittings require a crimping tool you do save money going this route but you do need the crimping tool they uh you have these copper rings that clamp the fitting protrudes into the into the pipe about three quarters of an inch this is all just kind of dry placed I haven't crimped any of these parts yet but if you'd rather save a lot of time you're spending right now you're spending about an extra ten dollars per fitting but this is a push to fit shark bite valve and these are this is all one inch diameter you might be using a uh, three quarter inch coming in, but mine is plumbed for one inch. And so these cost about $10 more. They are very convenient, very fast, and they are reusable. You can reuse these very easily. There's a tool that pushes in uh, the plastic ring and you can separate it. The other nice thing is once you have it in place, you can actually spin it where these don't move. So you have to have these aligned properly at the right angles that you need them when you crimp them because you can't just turn them around however you need them in the future. I will be using, however, one push to fit fitting and that is in a tight spot where I will not be able to use the crimp tool. And so we'll get to that. But either way, you will need to use one of these cutters, very inexpensive, but this is what you use to cut the PEX pipe. And I'll show you how to use that in this video as well. So those are the extra parts that you'll need in installing a three valve bypass system. If you already have one installed, great. Uh, if you don't, it's your choice to install it. I would highly recommend it. 
but you don't have to. It would just save you a lot of work in the future. So here I've built most of the valve system. And you want these rings to be one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the pipe before you crimp it. I have the one inch PEX ring installed, as you can see there. I already crimped the first ring, as you can see there right in the center. And so this one I'm going to do, you want to set it in about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the pipe. And you're going to crimp the fitting from two angles. So the first angle I'm just going to do straight on like this. And then the second time you want to do it at uh, 90 degrees from where you crimped it the first time. That will ensure that you get a complete seal all the way around and once you crimp it all the way it kind of locks in place you can feel it kind of snap in place and then you open it up and it should just come out also the fittings may move slightly as you're doing this so you just want to reposition them and now we'll be going in at a 90 degree angle and that will ensure a complete seal Now, as you're doing this, there is a check tool that you use, and it shows you, depending on the pipe size, you place it on the copper fitting that you just crimped, and that will tell you if you lined it up and crimped it properly. It should line up with the line across the top of the tool. If it goes all the way against the edge, then you've crimped it too tight, and if it doesn't fit at all, then it's not tight enough. So that line that goes across the tool indicates if you have it done properly. If you don't do it properly, it will either leak or you will damage the brass fitting or the pipe. This is also called a go no go gauge. So if it doesn't slide over the brass fitting or the copper fitting at all, then it's not tight enough. And if there's not a gap, if it goes all the way to the end, then that's too tight. So now that we've assembled our three-way valve, we're going to turn off the water and then go to the sink or faucet at the lowest point of the house and, and open it so that all of the excess water drains out. That way, when we cut the pipe, we won't have any water spilling all over the place. You want to do this with the hot and the cold water as well and just leave it open while you're doing this because even if it seems like it's a trickle that's still going to be a lot of water coming out when it comes time to cutting the pipe at this point you are going to be cutting the actual water line in your house to fit this on and so you want to have an idea of where you where you want it how high you want it to be i've already pre-measured everything um, so i know exactly where i want to put it this is obviously wider than the U that exists there. And you want to have a uh, bucket on standby as well as some rags because there still will be some water coming out as you make the cuts. So here I'm just using the PEX pipe cutter and it's kind of a ratchet blade. It just crimps and then you let go and keep crimping. And as you can see, all this water is still coming out even though we had the drain open. And so this is why you want to have that bucket on standby to catch it all and just let it drain out. And when you're cutting it, you do not want to hold the tool at any angle. You want it perpendicular, so 90 degrees. You don't want a, an angled cut. You just want a straight cut across. Now, what's nice about PEX pipe versus metal pipe is that there is some play and some flexibility. But here I'm dry placing the pipe so I can figure out where I want the elbow joint to join the valve system that I created. And once I have an idea, I'm going to mark it and then cut, make the second cut so that I can place the shark bite. I'm using the shark bite brass fittings instead of the PEX crimp tool because this is a very awkward position. 
And so I just wanted to make it a lot easier. So you may want to do a combination of um, crimping tools and the shark bites uh, tools or shark bite fittings. It will save you some money and you can rent these tools. You don't have to just outright purchase the crimping tool. You can rent them from places like Home Depot. So now I'll show you the push to fit shark bite fitting. And this is so easy to install. You may just want to do this entirely if you have the money and you don't want to waste time doing the crimping. It certainly saves time and you don't need that much skill to install it. I'll show you how easy it is. You just push it on. My arm's in the way, but you'll see now it is installed and that's it. You literally just push it on. And if you mess up, it's very easy to remove and make the change if it's too short or too long or whatever. You don't have to deal with uh, a crimped part or crimped fitting. So with our cuts made, we're going to attach the valve system. And so we'll put a copper ring on and place the brass fitting into the water inlet. You want to make sure you leave that eighth inch of pipe exposed between the brass ring and the brass fitting. Then we get the crimping tool and do the same as I showed you earlier. And crimp it again at a 90 degree angle. Now we're at the last step where we can actually restore water to the house while still working on the water softener and water filter install. And so you want to cut a piece of PEX to fit. And on one side, it's just the shark bite push to fit. Very easy. And the other side, we'll be using the copper ring with the PEX crimp tool. So it should look like this, and we have the two open ends in the off position, and then we have the bypass in the on position. Now at this point, you can turn the water back on, and you want to turn the water on slowly because there's a lot of air in the pipes, and you don't want to just give a blast of water pressure to any of your sinks or appliances that may be connected. And there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope I made a good case for why you should install a three valve bypass system. It really has uh, been handy in the install process of the water softener and filter as well as um, several times since installing it. So I do recommend it. I will also be uploading a install tips on the water softener and water filter things that I picked up and things that I recommend in a future video. So, so subscribe if you want more videos like that. And thanks for watching.